Hello, hello, happy Friday, everyone. Uh, greetings from New York. I am so excited for today. We have so much jam packed in this 30 minutes, which I think will be longer. So I'm going to wait and get people flooded in. We're reaching a really exciting chapter because not only are more people starting businesses than ever before, we are getting into the holiday season, which means if you have a product, if you have a service, something that people would love to receive as a gift, you're not going to want to miss not only this episode, but also staying in the Facebook book group, connecting with our very special guest. And he's going to share all about not only how he launched his product, but what he's learned from being in broadcast journalism. Yes, we have a very special guest who not only is a product founder, he's an award-winning dermatologist, he's been on top tier press, and he's also been on the other side of the pitching. So without further ado, I am so excited to welcome the one and only Dr. Ross Roduski. Thank you so much for joining us today. Wow, thank you so much, Gloria. What an introduction. I You you nailed my introduction, so I really appreciate everything there. And it's so nice to get a chance to talk, um, especially for you know everyone following along today. Um, a little bit about you know my journey, my journey with you, my journey separately from you, and you know how we sort of pieced everything together to where I am professionally today. And of course, we're sunshots is, and that's what I'm so excited also to share with with your audience today. That's awesome. So there, I mean, there's so much to get into, but obviously you're a member of the PR starter pack. And I remember on one of the calls, you and your wife showed me this amazing invention that you, that only you have come up with from your years of medical experience. Obviously you care deeply about your patients. And so you, you came up with this product, but I actually, you told me that you were um, getting a lot of top tier. I mean, like men's health, Allure, ABC, that you were able to get onto those even before you came up with a physical product. So can you talk to me a little bit about your relationship to media? Yeah, sure. Um, so one, I think that most people don't realize is how much expertise they actually have, right? So even before sort of this product, and I'm going to show everyone sunshots in just a bit, but before it sort of became an actual item, what I was able to do is sort of say, hey, you know what, I'm a board certified dermatologist. I actually previously worked for WCBS TV in New York. I worked for ABC News and medical journalism. It was a passion. It was something that I was excited about. And I think that medicine and communications really go hand in hand, right? It's one of the few fields where we are trained trained in textbooks. We are looking, we are reading um, really nuanced studies that don't make any sense to the public. And the only way to sort of break it down is you have to use easier language. That, that is an expertise, that is a training, and that is not something that is taught in medical school. And so actually when I was, you know, even before training, I reached out to WCBS, I said, hey, you know what? Like. I'm going in for medicine, like I have an interest in biology and chemistry. Is there a position that you have in medical journalism just for medicine? And they're like, no one's ever asked us that. And they said, one second. And said, sure, like, why don't you come? Like, and that's really just the start of it. And so from there, I was able to really dissect really complex studies, interview local doctors in New York, um, find out what is really interesting and what's exciting for, um, for the media. Because believe it or not, sometimes the stuff that gets on the news isn't the things that you might even think is the most interesting. It could be someone came in and was like, hey, you know what? I was at the store and the supermarket guy was telling me, did you hear about this sunscreen problem? And then they go find the press release and that's sort of what makes the news. So I'm here to tell your audience and those who are following that you have an opportunity to make an interest and make a dent in sort of what is newsworthy because it doesn't simply come from you know a news wire. And that, I think that that's one of the things that you talk about as well. It's not just a news wire service. It's what you find interesting and how you can wrap that relevancy, that R portion of it, um, so that if a producer reads your pitch, they're saying, wait a minute, this, this like totally makes sense. Yeah. And, and I, th I think you, you hit the nail on the head because I always say there is no such thing as a newsworthy company or a person, right? I've written pitches for bath towels and candles. I mean, is that newsworthy? I don't know. Right. Um, and honestly, like skin cancer and like sunscreen, that's not really sexy either. Right. Yep. But you have been able to turn something that people don't really want to talk about, like moles and stuff, into like top tier press that's given you so much clout. And now with Sunshots, which like is, you know, it's a product for sunscreen. Again, it's not like the most buzzworthy thing, but you've been able to use your experience in the media and leverage that into, uh, you know, a feature. Didn't you say you just got featured recently, right? For Sunshots? 
Yeah, that's right. So let me introduce everyone to Sunshot. So dermatologists like myself have always recommended an ounce of sunscreen to cover the body from head to toe. However, who is bringing with them a shot glass to the beach or to the pool? So enter Sunshots. It is a portable, it is a reusable one ounce sunscreen measuring cup. It is, it goes anywhere with you. It collapses. So just like that, I had a little bit of actual sunscreen still left in there. Um, and what I love about it is it's reusable. It goes everywhere. So you never have to be without a sunscreen. Why is that super, super important? Because, well, 90% of skin aging comes from the sun. So if you're looking at yourself and you're in any decade of life, but you simply want to slow the process of aging, and I think almost every one of us wants to, it really starts with proper sun protection. And so I like to, maybe it's a little catchy, but you know, sun shots can really help you today, save you from the sunburn and the skin cancer tomorrow. And then the other thing is, you know, not just aging, but skin cancer is so prevalent. It is on the rise. We are finding more and more in younger and younger patients. And we know that it is directly linked to sun exposure. So again, if you could do something today to really help prevent your um to really help prevent your skin tomorrow then that's it and sun shots comes in two colors so there and there so we've got our really cool tropical mango and <laughs> our island ocean uh or tropical ocean and island mango and one thing that i think that you really helped me when i was sort of listening to your uh pr starter pack and when you had um you know some of your um your live sessions is like Sunshots wasn't even delivered from our factory yet. Like I didn't have it. It took me years to go from prototype to everything. It was like a slow jam. And I know you always reference one of your um, one of your people that you worked with that started a, that got press release for a gym that didn't even have a physical location. Like I was that person. I was like. I, you know what? I just I watched your I watched your uh, show and I was like I need to simply send a pitch and find relevancy and find someone to respond. And so far, Sunshots has been featured in EverydayHealth.com. Um, press continues to roll in. I've been in Men's Health. I've been in Allure, um, Birdie. I see all the applause going around, and so. It's, it's really been great and um, it's been a slow process, but I've been super, super excited by it all. So, so you're saying you started crafting your pitch and working on it even before it was like ready to be out into the masses. Correct. Yeah. There's actually something called success fatigue. Maybe this is the, the, the medical doctor of me here speaking about something. But success fatigue is where you've worked so hard to really create something, which is, you know, this was something that I had an idea six, seven years ago. And I finally got the intellectual property and the patents all down a couple of years ago. And then there were prototype builds and waiting for colors and design. And then you finally get this thing in your hand and you're like, well, what do I do now? Like I did it. But no, and like it, that's just the beginning. And so you sort of you craft your pitches, you craft your press releases, you try to go, you say, hey, like this is my prototype, this is what it's gonna be. And people wanna hear it. And that's why I think it's been so successful so far. Well, I mean, the way you talk about it, you're obviously passionate about it. So we're going to, this is kind of a jam-packed episode. You had come to me, so you got the starter pack and then you're like, I want to work with you one-on-one, -on -one. but you actually like receive pitches all day because you used to be in broadcast journalism. So why don't you just like really quick, like maybe three or four things that you can either validate me or maybe like go against what I say, but what are the top three things you in the editing room and in your producers meetings, what it makes a good pitch or what you should not do in a pitch? Yeah. So one, they, you know, producers and editors are looking for something that is relevant. I really can't stretch that. And like, you have to make it so specific and it could be the same thing reinvented. Like, why do you think that we're, we always sort of see new studies about caffeine or new studies about, um, you know, sunscreen, for example, sunscreen, I'm, I'm convinced somewhere, someone out there is just trying to make a new study about sunscreen every day. And that's because it's relevant to today. So for example, you know, one of the things that I think it made our pitches really so helpful is that we were all indoors for a year and a half. At the beginning of the summer, we were just launching, you know, where everyone was getting outdoors, the big outdoors, and we called it the summer of sunburns. And one, it's got alliteration. People love alliteration, but it's so relevant. Like I, that, that totally makes sense. So it's, it has to make sense. It's got to be relevant. Um, and it's got to have a few important things that they could use either from an emotional point of view, right? So producers and editors love that, that face. Whenever you think of a story that could get a face to something. So you could think of the, the person who's got a really blistering sunburn on their shoulder or a child who d isn't wearing their sunscreen and it's just not going to do what they sort of need to do today. And believe it or not, unfortunately, one, 
one blistering sunburn before the age of 18 can double a risk for melanoma. So like there's a face right there and there's relevancy to it. So finding a face, finding something that's relevant to today and why people should really care about it and why it's important for their audience is going to absolutely get you up there. Um, and then sometimes it, it, it takes sending out a lot of these a lot of these, you know, emails until someone responds. Like it's, I don't want people to think that if they have this one relevant pitch and they're just going to send it to one person and, and if they don't get a response and they're going to give up, no, you have to send it to, to hundreds and hundreds and, uh, and your, you know, PR starter pack, your Excel spreadsheet has absolutely helped that because that gives you the information that you sort of need to do. Um, but, you know, find these people on LinkedIn, find them all over. It is so, so helpful. And like you wrote below, like pitching is a muscle. The more you do it, the quicker, the faster you could do it and the more relevant that you have. So you get better and better every single time. And that's some of the experiences that I've learned before you and I even met that really when I was with ABC News, um, you know, we would look at studies that were embargoed and it was like two interns. Like these are people who are not like senior medical producers. These are two like medical residents that are good. Uh oh, I think his uh, Wi-Fi broke out. Say it so, again. Uh, These are I'm, two back. I'm back. You're back. Um, <laughs> what I'm saying is you, you'd be surprised at who along the totem pole is really reviewing relevancy when it comes to it. So, you know, it, again, like these aren't some of these aren't senior broadcast producers. These are either interns or these are, you know, people who are building their way up. And so everyone and anyone along the way could really give you relevancy and really help your yeah. story. out. And I think that that's also something so important as well. And you touch upon a couple of things. Obviously, I talk about relevance. It's a key part of the CPR method. But what's more important is that you say that you have to keep pitching. And I'm sure you being on the other side of the receiving like end, you've received pitches from people over and over. And you've probably said no to people uh, before you've said yes. So it's okay to keep pitching, right? You've you've like seen like people pitch multiple times and it's not like yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, a lot of the pitches that I get for the for um, when I'm on the the, the broadcast side is hey, I just wanted to follow up and see if you read this below. And sometimes I didn't read it. Like you get a lot of emails. These people are getting a lot of emails. So it does help to really stay on target and, you know, remind them and say, hey, I don't know if you had a chance to review it, but, you know, this is really coming out. So definitely persistency is key. Um, and it is a drop in the bucket. Like these emails come fast and furious. So don't worry if no one opened it. It's it's a little bit of luck, right? So it really is that someone's going to open up your that email at that time, and so that's just something that I would also stress as well. Yeah, um, I mean the upside of that is like you get rejected, but then the downside, but the upside is you get in men's health, and no ad is going to convince your authority like the way getting into men's health, right? So. To me, that's worth it for me to send a few more emails. <laughs> yeah, um, and I want people that are that are following today to really think of things that they're noticing, like trends are so important. Um, because, for example, you know, a couple of years ago, keto, like the ketogenic diet, was super, super popular, and I was seeing patients in my clinic that were developing rashes that were so specific to keto. There is no producer at Men's Health that is sitting around thinking of, hey, what are the rashes that are related to to keto? So it's up to you and, you know, you being me as a dermatologist, everyone else is very different to say like, hey, and I sent an email to a producer and said like, I am noticing like there are patients who are getting these rashes from going immediately keto. I think this would be really, really important. And guess what? If you Google my name, Ross Rodusky, I am quoted as someone who provided info on an entire article that they wrote for uh, ketogenic diet and what they're seeing with the skin. Um, and so... Oh, again, you know, it's finding these contacts, keeping keeping in touch with them, and just it's okay to want the spotlight for a little bit because it's really helping your cause and it's helping any yeah. publicity. So it's all it's all worth it. And it's your why. Like I don't think people are in the business just to purely make money. At least from the people who join the starter pack, they all have a purpose, and that's to make someone else's yeah. life better. So just lean into that. So type in yes in the chat if you are dying to see the pitch that Dr. Ross has written. And we're going to give him some feedback. And then you're going to actually see a second pitch that he took the feedback from our one-on-one -on -one and he redid it. And what was the result of that pitch? You already got featured, right? Oh, I think we were losing him again. All right. Just a little bit. I, yeah. I don't know why, though, because I have very good Wi-Fi. So I apologize. Um, I should be on. Am I back? You're on. Yeah, you're back. OK, great. Um, it's just catching up a little bit. Can you hear me, yeah. Gloria? 
Yes, I okay, can. Great. Yeah, tell us about the uh, new okay, pitch. Yeah, I mean, we made it more focused. We made it more relevant. Um, sometimes taking an objective look really, really helps because I was kind of going for like catchy, trendy, which is, again, I must have written and uh, and reviewed hundreds of articles that are all catchy and all um, trendy. But I had to remember that I was coming from the pitch side, not the receiving side. So we kind of made it more specific and more narrow. And I thought that that was perfect. Um, and so everydayhealth.com wrote back, um, you know, it's, it's being featured in a few other publications that are coming out. Um, I went, I went in a different article. Like I didn't need some of the bigger ones. I wanted to be featured with the skin cancer foundation, which is what, you know, I was able to do with my pitch, um, with nice. my own American Academy of Dermatology with large conferences. Right. So it just, just thinking of those big names doesn't necessarily help me. Uh, mm -hmm. so I'm excited for all the press that's coming out. And all of the speaking events and the free conference passes you're going to be getting. Oh, you bet. Yeah. Yeah, you bet, baby. Okay, so uh, type in yes in the chat if you want to see this pitch. I'm going to share a screen with you. I basically copied it into a Google Doc. You're going to see the pitch that uh, Dr. Ross first wrote. And again, he's already really good. So the first pitch is pretty good because he's already been in journalism, right? And with a tiny few tweaks here and there, you're going to be able to see the final pitch the one that he sent to get onto Everyday Health, to get in the conferences, dermatology. So you're going to be able to see both of them. So stay with us, okay? Um, okay, so can everyone see my screen? You bet, right. Gloria. Awesome. So, um, so, so this is the this is a pitch that you sent me, and let's just start with the subject line, right? This sunscreen hack can save you from a sunburn. So what do people think about this? I want this to be very interactive. So type in the comments, what do you think about the subject? If you were on the receiving end, again, you're not the customer, you're the, you're the journalist. What do you think about this one? Um, let's, let's get some feedback here. Okay, so people say, okay, yes, they're excited to see it. Okay, so for me, I think this sounds really great in terms of from a marketing point of view, but you already know this, right? A lot of times we have to do that mental gymnastic, which is honestly the number one transformation is you're not selling to the journalist. So for me, if I was reading this, I would think like, oh, this is an, an ad or like a targeted like newsletter. It's not, I got on the wrong email list, delete, right? So if sure. I get something like this weight loss pill will help you or whatever, it's like, Oh, I got on the wrong list. So we got to make the subject line almost like what is the actual story going to be? And if it's three tips or three tricks, what is that? Right. So I would change the subject line to, you know, three ways we can save ourselves from our, you know, first sunburn from COVID or something like that. Right. That to me is a little bit more specific. So let's let's keep reading it. it so it's first name of journalist. With lockdowns and government mandates ending, Americans are more eager than ever to spend time outdoors. Boom. So remember what I said about the CPR method? I like to put relevance at the very top because relevance is the most important part of the CPR method, and you are competing for their attention every single line down. So the first line of the pitch has to be the most compelling one. So you really follow that to a T. I really like that because it's like, why the hell should I care about this pitch? Is because we are literally going, you know, lockdowns are ending, we're getting vaccinated. And by the way, this pitch was like a few months ago. So things are different now. But at the time, we were going, you know, where things were opening up. So that is perfect. I love how you said that um, dermatologists are calling this the summer of, of sunburns because our skin actually can forget how to deal with the increased sun exposure. I love that not only did you follow up with relevance, you added a little bit of credibility and specificity. So you're saying, cool. here's what's happening. And medical experts are actually saying that there's a problem. And so that's where you kind of build that bridge between this is why you need to hear this pitch, right? Because I'm actually going to be offering some tips and tricks. So, and then you put as a renowned dermatologist featured in all these places. These are the ways. So I like, I like how you put the credibility first. I would almost argue that you don't really need all of this. Um, obviously it's great that you've had all these, but even if you don't put that you've been featured, I would still think that it's so good at the beginning that they would keep on reading. Right. So for anyone that's watching, if you don't, if you haven't been featured, it's OK. Most of the people I work with have never been featured before. It's OK. Um, here are three tips to enjoy the sunshine safely. Um, OK, so for me, it's not really it's like I feel like you're like short, like uh, short selling yourself. It's not really about even enjoying. I think you're literally saving people's lives here. So it's not even about okay. enjoying. It's like 
I'm actually saving people from like a lifelong like health reaper. So let's make this a little bit more urgent. And I don't mean to paint it in like a gloomy way, but it's true. I mean, cancer is bad and it's a life or death situation. So it's not about just enjoying it's how to avoid a catastrophic like sunburn, which everyone knows leads to sun cancer, right? Skin cancer. So I would just change that here. I love how you took what you saw in the PR starter pack and you did uh, in threes. And so as okay. a journalist, it's it looks good. It's not like you're writing like a huge block of text. So I like that. I, what I like even more is in the bullet points, if you can actually even highlight like the first few words, right? So if your three tips uh, to avoid your first skin cancer, whatever, like boom, number one, like bold it, and then you can go into explanation. So that way when they're scanning, they can kind of, they don't have to read all three of them. They can see like, okay, here are the three tips. Am I going to keep reading or not? Because the last thing you want to do is for them to be like, oh, okay, get to the point, get to the point. Okay, I'm done with this, right? So, so the first one, it takes more than an ounce of sunscreen to cover the entire body. Melanoma and other skin cancers most commonly develop in areas least covered by sunscreen. This includes the top of the ears in men and the back of the legs in women. I love this, that you put the specificity about how it affects men and women differently. Wow. I always say this on my one-on-one -on -one pitch writing sessions is I feel like your pitch is like an onion. And the, the things that people know that are like, duh, are at the top of the onion. And it takes a lot of mastery to peel the layers of the onion. So you get into that really juicy part. And that's what you're doing here. Because instead of saying like, we all know that skin cancer is bad. Therefore, we should use skin sunscreen. You need an ounce of it. Like you could have left it at that. And that's the top layer of the onion, right? But no, you went further and you said men and women have actual specific areas. So that's like, oh yeah, this guy knows exactly what he's talking about. That's giving me meat to my article if I were to write one about, about tips for sunscreen use. Um, I, I love that here. This might be a great area, a, a way to plug in sun shots. Again, a lot of people approach it like, I have the solution to overcome uh, your first uh, sun sunburn. This is my solution. And here are three reasons why my solution is great. No, 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 no. That is, right. and you didn't do that, right? You know better than to sell your product. We all know that the reason why you're pitching is to sell something or to offer something that relates to you. Like everyone knows that, but you're doing it in a way that's like three steps back from that. And so it gives room for the conversation to breathe. And it's not like, you know, me, me, me. Yeah, but I think actually this is one of the areas that your that your that your viewers and your followers actually ch are ch a little. It, it, it's a challenge because how do you mm -hmm. go from expertise to actually using this as an opportunity to pitch, you know, sunshots? Like, how mm -hmm. would you actually do it? I, I actually think I could do better here. Would you include it? I'm sure a lot of I people are, that are following along are saying like, I, I want to put myself out there, and I actually think this is the best way to do it. And you can. So, so actually, I was just going to say that what you can do here is plug sunshots here after you talk about why you need an ounce. So it's like, here's a solution. But I wouldn't lead with the solution and three sure. reasons why your solution is the best is what yeah. I'm trying to say. So actually, sure. in number one, I would actually put that is why people really like sunshots or that is why I invented sunshots from my years of experience. Right. So you can definitely plug in sunshots here, but it comes almost as like a casual mention and not like here's the sunshot. So great. So number two, the scalp is often the most overlooked part of the body when it comes to sun protection. Early detection for melanoma is critical, but also impossible in areas covered with hair. Again, we're peeling the onion and a lot of people don't think about the scalp. People don't even put sunscreen on their scalp. So I love how you're giving people that are one tips that are so not obvious. And I love that. You know, and yeah. it speaks a lot about the research that you've done on your audience to come up with layers of the onion that's like not what everyone thinks. So I love that here. You can you can ostensibly also plug sunshots here too. I wouldn't plug sunshots like in every line, but you could do it in the first one or the second one because they all point to why you're set, you have yeah. a solution for this. Okay. So three pack smart. I mean, you could even do it here because yours is, is, is you know, um, what do you call it? Retractable. It's super easy to pack waterproof. So you can even plug it in here, pack smart to minimize breakouts. Do you know what hates change your face routine? Be sure. Okay. So again, this, this is to me reading a little bit more like an ad. So let's try to make this a little bit more like an okay. article. So yeah. pack smart to minimize breakouts. It would be like, um, as people are like traveling, you know, for the first time and dealing with travel hassle, the last thing they want to think about is like packing. So I've made it super easy or something like that, you know? Oh, that's um, great. Yep. Love that. 
uh, uh, always point to like, you know, the solution for the, for the consumer. And I like how at, at the end you put the credibility part. So, uh, so you could even take all this stuff and put it at the end and get to your point faster. But because you've been in so many top outlets, I say, why not put it in first, right? Because again, dermatology is a field that you need to have a lot of clout and credibility. Yeah. So again, like it, like I'd rather interview someone who's a board certified than someone who's not. So it helps. Uh, I know from over a decade of experience how harmful the sun can be, especially our children, from the sun's harmful rays, right? As we start traveling and socializing. So again, you wrapped it up reminding them why this pitch is relevant right now and that they should not tuck it away in their inbox for next season. So everyone, please give a round of applause for Dr. Ross. I think ah, this nice. is an incredible pitch. I think you did it in a way that puts your expertise in broadcast journalism and again, like your why, right? So um, you can definitely plug sunshots in any in every one of these. So see, look, someone says right here, I never knew you could put sunscreen on the scalp. Right? Right. This is amazing. So, you know, I added a, a pitch for someone yesterday for like a gift guide. And a lot of the, um, like one of the three points was just really obvious. And I'm like, let's get beneath the surface. Let's peel away the onion. And that's exactly what Dr. Ross did here. He gave us tips that we haven't even thought about. And that to me, is a great story, right? So let's keep looking at the second step of the pitch that you that you made. And a lot of a lot of times, you know, honestly, I think this is a great pitch. It, you obviously know what you're doing. You have years of experience in media, and your product speak for itself. But you actually did even more, and you took the feedback, and you went into the starter pack, and, and you did a second stab of this pitch again using the different subject line um, options that, that I have in the starter pack. Remember always to have different subject lines so you can A-B test it and maybe yeah. send like a few emails each one. And as I always say, install an email tracking device, right? So let's read the second pitch. And this is the pitch that got you featured, right? So let's read it. I don't know if the, the text is too small. And, I, and as we are reading it, I want people to see what is it before and after. Do you agree with the changes? Do you, like how much do you think it's benefited? So please type in the comments. I want it to be super interactive. So I'm going to start reading it. Subject line one, is your skin ready to soak up the sun after you're inside? A dermatologist shares three sun smart skin tips for summer 2021. Boom. It's specific. It's relevant. It's timely. I worry about the length. I think it might get cut off because I think it's the subject line preview, but if not, I love it. Subject line number two, a dermatologist shares the skinny on smart skin fixes for summer 2021. Again, I think that's really like catchy and trendy, but um, you know, it's, I probably wouldn't talk to a journalist that way. That might be actually the name of the article. Yeah. Right. So that could be an article, but I probably wouldn't pitch that way, but it's just me. Um, for that reason, I like number one better. Let's read number three, three, po three post pandemic ways to prep your skin for the sun. A dermatologist shares his tips for summer 2021. Perfect. So I really love one um, and three. I feel like one, if I'm reading it as a journalist, they might be like, um, you know, why are you asking me this question? Like, I, like I wouldn't ask them the question. This, again, yeah. this is being written like this is the article. So for that reason, I think I like three the best. And why don't, why don't everyone type in the chat, which one you like the best? Well, I appreciate everyone's comments. We actually went with three for most of them. Three got the most opens. That's why email tracking devices are really, really helpful. And one thing that I also wanted to pitch up is because obviously I, was, I, I learned through you, even though I had some background experience, and I don't want people to be discouraged. You don't have to have worked in broadcast journalism before, but signing up for the Google News Alerts to really see what these titles are coming out and sort of seeing what is making actual news headlines is, has been so, so helpful. I mean, I put in sunscreen, yes. I put in sunblock, and yes. I was seeing almost everything that I was pitching towards them. So it really, really has been helpful. Yay, I'm so glad you took that advice to heart. So everyone watching, don't do this now, but afterwards, obviously sign up for Google News Alerts. You literally type in Google News Alerts and it'll tell you every day all of the articles that are being written. You can start to train your mind to go from like marketing and selling to like, oh, this is what's newsworthy, right? Yeah. Um, that's that's one of the hacks. Another hack is sign up for Haro, help a reporter out. And please open my emails because I will be sending everyone all of the best um, journalist inquiries that I've been finding a lot for gift guides. And obviously if you join the PR starter pack, you don't ever need to yeah. search and I have all the gift guide stuff in there for you already. So those are three. But let's, let's keep doing this because this pitch is just amazing. Okay. So first name, summer 2021 is all about reconnecting with the ones we love in the great outdoors, barbecues, beach days, and backyards. Great. You're painting a picture for me. I love it. Um, and it will replace zoom happy hours. Thank you. So you keep being very specific about the reality of the here and now and yeah. i love it 
But before we go and soak up the sun, it's important to remember these three sun smarts. Oh, so you actually took the advice to heart and you didn't lead with I've been featured. Yeah. So that's that's great. And and you don't need to because if you paint the relevance, you don't need the credibility, really. You know, so that's what you did. So number one, boom, you also took the advice of highlighting each of the three. So as they're scanning, they can see exactly what it is without having to dig. So bravo to that. So one, an ounce to go covers you from head to toe. Great. Only one in four people applied um, recommended one ounce amount. That, uh, that is why, like, you know, I've invented sun shots, the world's first and only portable measuring cup has you covered. Just fill to the one ounce line, apply to your face. Boom. So if you have a really good pitch that paints the picture of here and now, you can plug in your product, right? So that's exactly what you did here. You were actually really unapologetic about it and you plugged it in right here. Boom. And this pitch got you featured. So it just goes to show like, if you have the right format, if it reads well, you have the right subject line. And again, if you don't have the right subject line, your pitch is never going to be open. So if anyone is figuring out sure. how to do their pitch, start with the subject line. And I have a subject line exercise for you in the starter pack because I don't want you to put the cart before the horse. Let's just start working on your subject lines, right? So boom. Second one, let's get physical. Do you know the difference between the two main types of sunscreen? A physical or mineral sunblock? I had no idea about that. And guess what? I have eczema and so do a lot of people. So I love that you gave someone something new. You drew the bridge to their audience. So if I'm a journalist, I'm like, oh, like my audience is going to have considerations because they do have eczema and sensitive skin. So thank you for that. Chemical sunscreens are lightweight and great for acne pro screen. They, per they contain ingredients like these things I can't pronounce because I didn't go to medical school and act like sponges. <laughs> <laughs> Three, pack smart to minimize breakouts. Great. I love it here. Do you know or hits change your face routine? So I probably wouldn't write it like that, but you wrote it like this. That's kind of a little bit more like interesting and catchy and like it worked, you know, but for me, it'd, it'd probably be like more like cut and dry, like, um, you know, pack smart and, you know, eliminate yeah, totally your whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, too big to fit in your carry on either check it or mail it. So this is great. So for anyone that's watching, we have travel, we have accessories, we have like school, we have so many different angles about the here and now. And if you can paint that picture and draw a bridge of relevance, your pitch is going to get open, right? And then only at the end, you put you have over a decade. And did you even put that you've been featured in all these places? It was in the it was in the bottom. Yeah, I think we're looking at I tweaked it just a little bit, but it does include it. Yeah. So so again, this is what's really shocking is that you don't need to be featured in all these places. You actually took away all of your features yeah. from the first one. And this one is what got you featured. So for anyone out there, you don't need to be featured. You're ready to start now. So I love how you say, as we start traveling and socializing, the sunburn you prevent today will set you to a healthier tomorrow. So again, you wrapped up everything because people tend to remember the last thing they read. So the last thing they're reading is why it's so critical for their readers to know this is because as we start traveling, we need to prevent the sunscreen. And then the energy, and I, I teach this in every masterclass. If you haven't watched it, go to gloriachowpr.com slash masterclass today. The energy of your call to action is, I'm an expert and people really care about this. So let me know when and when you want to chat. It's never, please feature my sun shots. Please feature this. People love this, right? You don't even say it here. You don't even say, I would love to be featured as many people are using this. You don't even beg for that. So the energy of this is you're plugging in yourself, but you're not asking to be featured. So can you talk a little bit more about this pitch and kind of the process of getting featured in all the places that this pitch got you featured in? Yeah. Um, I mean, so once we created the title and the subjects, I created these, uh, um, you know, I used the mail tracker and I started to send them out. And I think that the one thing that's important is I saw that they were open and, I, you know, I followed up, you know, maybe a week later if they, I followed up a few days later if it wasn't open, but if it was open, I said, Hey, you know, I just wanted to see and go from there. And actually that that's the one that, that sort of wrote back and featured me. So it's, it, I want to tell everyone it's okay to be persistent. Um, but a lot yes. of times these producers and editors, and I've seen this on the other side, like we pocket this expertise. And so even if we are not writing an article right now, um, you know, three weeks later or a month later or two months later, they may reach out to you and like, hey, you know, I need a dermatologist or hey, I need a candle maker or hey, I need someone who, who can talk about the gym um, because yes, they'll reach out to you. that happens all the time. Yes. Yeah. So that's super, super important. In fact, one of my, you know, one of, one of my contacts that I previously helped um, articles for, um, for men's health and things like that, they had moved on to a different position. And I said, hey, it's good to hear from you. Like I'm available. These are some important skin tips. They didn't, I didn't hear anything. And then boom, Prevention Magazine, they sort of wanted me to, uh, you know, Prevention Magazine, they, they needed me for, for a quote. 
that's how it works. And remember, one thing that you always say is you can't, if it is cataloged on Google and your article is saved, you're there. That is amazing reach. That is amazing influence. You don't have to pay an influencer to sort of get your name out there because it's not stored. That's not how you build your website. Exactly. So now as people start to Google my name or as people start to Google sunshots, like there I am. And that's sort of how it goes from there. Um, yeah. So you're reading one of the articles in Everyday Health where I was featured um, and you should be able to see it. Let's see, you're too stingy. I forget where it's there. Um, actually, it's right there. Missy so it's in number areas. two. No, it's number two. Scroll up, scroll up. Oh, number two. Okay. Yeah. You're too stingy oh, when applying sunscreen. And the other thing that I want you to know is like, again, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the subjects that I was giving the producers or the editors were like articles in and of themselves. It's mm -hmm. okay to be a little catchy because that's obviously what they use, but make sure that you include really, really relevant stuff. That's another thing that I want to teach your audience. Um, and if there are any questions, if anyone sort of, you know, needs advice, either as an inventor, as someone who's worked in medical journalism, like I'm happy to answer some of these questions. So definitely comment along, but you could see once you give them that info, it, it doesn't have to be a banner ad. It's not like they're going to walk around and say, here is Sunshots, please, you know, everyone look at this. It's that subtle way that they put that in right there. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, like they are selling your product for you. They're saying they literally yeah. gave you, they gave the link and they gave the price. So this is an ad people can buy directly, but you, it's free. First of all, you didn't pay for this ad. And it is in an article that people are looking for a solution because we all know when we're targeted with ads, what do we do? We click the little X and we say, nope, I don't want to read it. But if I'm actually reading something and you're not selling to me, and if I'm looking for ways, I'm probably going to buy this because this is actually like made by a board certified dermatologist and it's in an article from an outlet that I trust, right? So this is going to yep. be on the internet for decades now. So can you talk to me a little bit more about, okay, so you sent the pitch, like how many days and like, did they get on the phone with you? Like, what was that whole thing? Um, so I sent the pitch and the response took about ooh, three or four days were like, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking of a story in mind. I, I'll be back at you. And then ooh. about a week after that, they said, Hey, like I'm looking for a dermatologist. Remember they weren't looking for an inventor of sunshots and everyone's going to find different relevancy, right? Not everyone here is a physician. Um, but for me, it was like, Hey, great. They wanted skin tips for summer. Like that, that's what they wanted. They, they weren't looking to write me a press release for sunshots. And so think of you in your position, whoever's following along and saying, you know what? Hey, I created this, this amazing, let, let's use your, your soap and candle dispenser. Like, what is your relevance? Like, why can you quote on that? Because I guarantee you, unless it's a, unless it's a gift guide, and we always talk about that later. And by the way, I have to tell you how I actually was featured on Harrow. We're going to get to that maybe towards the end. Um, <laughs> but they just wanted me for my expertise. They, they didn't want me for sunshots, but I used that as my plug. When I was responding, I was saying, I already have them. We've already passed that CPR method. Now's the time to really say this, 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 this. But by the way, number two, sunshots, this is why it's really, really important to make sure that they quote me correctly. And that's how sunshots was able to get the press that it needed. Yay. So now you're on everyday health and you know, that's a legitimate, credible thing for your audience. It speaks directly to your audience, people who care about health, people who care about, um, you know, sun protection. Yeah. Everyday and health you has can 40, 40 million monthly viewers. Like it's huge. Ah! It's tremendous. So, okay. That, that's, did you, so, so, and then, and you know, now you're able to basically take the media lists that are in there. And, and by the way, I'm probably going to add some more in there just for like skin and whatnot, but you can basically take this same pitch that's basically been vetted and yep. you can keep pitching it more and more and more. It's not like, Oh, one person covered it. I can't talk about this anymore. Absolutely not. Um, and you also can find relevancy. You know, I'm a seasonal type of product, right? We're in the summer, but I'm actually going to use your, there's no Gloria Chow that I know in Australia, but I'm going to be reaching out to some contacts down there because their summer is going. So never give up at all. Plus, you know, you know, we're thinking the end of the summer, you know, prevent that last summer sunburn before, you know, before Labor Day. Like these are pitches that are going out as mm. we sort of speak. So it's no longer at the beginning of the summer. We're now towards the end of the summer. Um, but hey, you need sunscreen in October and November. I moved to Texas. You need sunscreen the whole year. So you could always yes. find relevancy because again, I, and I want people to think that when they're inventing a product, don't get locked or trapped into this one thing, right? Like my product isn't just when you go to the beach in the summer in June and July in the Northeast. No, like you're going tennis, you're playing, you're going outdoors, you're going shopping. Yep. All of these areas can age your skin. All of these areas can cause skin cancer. You yes. need to protect your skin. And that's why Sunshots is so relevant.
Yes, it, it is. It's relevant year round. It's uh, your world is like your level of success is what you deem it to be. And if you say, oh, it's not relevant or I don't, then they're not going to think it's relevant. But you're like, it is relevant because of gold, right? And like you said, Australia, by the way, the media lists are worldwide. Um, so that's that's in there. But I can put in a new one. If you're getting so much success, I don't mind making a new one for you, you know, but the one that you've been using has already gotten you success. So keep using that one. And then uh, if it's, if you don't have enough Australia contacts, Amazing. Yeah. make you another one. Yeah. But they're perfect, worldwide. Perfect. <laughs> um, so does anyone have any questions? Wow. Time just flew by Dr. Ross. I mean, yeah, wow. it's 40 minutes and we've had at one point we had like 25 people up in here. So um, why don't we take a few minutes? Why don't we ask Dr. Ross Radisky anything and everything. Thank you so much for being a wealth of knowledge, for being a source of inspiration. Does anybody have any questions for him about pitching, about subject lines, about your own occupation versus your invention? Does anyone have a question? So we're going to just like, like open it up here. So yeah. Dr. Greta, how are you, Dr. Greta? Congrats on your recent press feature, by the way, Dr. Greta. She was just recently in Women's Golf Magazine. Uh, so she asked, did you pitch strictly via email or did you also use LinkedIn? Great questions. Um, I did both actually. So um, for Harrow, um, I wanted to find the editor that, that, that we were using them and they responded. I followed up on LinkedIn. Um, so that was a great question. Um, I did mostly email though. LinkedIn, I'm still learning a little bit. But I will say, as Gloria always says, build your LinkedIn profile for the persona you want to be, not the persona you are. And you know, I've changed a lot of my LinkedIn so that I'm saying now yes. I treated 10,000 plus people for skin cancer and this and that oh. and that. Um, so I made We've all obviously watched the starter pack. Uh, module yes. On that. So, um, so really LinkedIn is super, super helpful because they will find you. Most people now will Google you, um, for your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's really, really important. But most of the, um, the pitches went straight by email. Awesome. Yeah. And, and you also, you know, in the starter pack, I always see email and then follow up because we're on social media anyways. Why not connect with people who's actually going to move the needle for your business? Right. There you go. Yeah. Does anyone have any other questions about following up? I have another question. So a lot of people are like, what's the cadence? I'm scared to follow up. I don't want to be a nuisance. As someone who has received pitches, what do you have to say about that? They'll let you know when you've done too much follow up, meaning do it because you're not going to over bombard them. They are getting emails. This is, you know, this is why they're in this business. They, they need to be pitched. Remember, you are giving them information that they need, not the other way around. The news is compiled based on relevancy that people are giving them. Um, you know, I think one great example is back in early June, I saw the studies that were showing that certain types of sunscreens might not be so great for your skin. Um, but it was flat. There was nothing on CNN. There was nothing on ABC News. And I just was like, this is a great opportunity to start pitching yourself because I saw the studies. So what I did was I started to email. I started to email. And two weeks after that study came out, just because no one actually thought of the relevancy, you have to give them that relevancy. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. No one is just reading that news blotter and saying, oh, this can cause skin, ca this can cause cancer. Like yeah. no one's thinking. my Wi-Fi cut out. Okay. Did yeah, you get everything that I get everything that I said? So I don't think that you, I don't think that there's ever too much. If you are thinking that it's too much, it's not. So go for it. Boom. They will tell you when they're sick of you. So keep pitching. That's the energy, right? Um, someone says, so if you follow up on social media, do you still follow up again via email? Hell yeah. yeah. I did that. Um, you know, so my contacts that I worked for previously, um, where they've quoted me in Allure or Men's Health, I said, hey, like, I want to follow up. I still give them a modified pitch. Maybe I made it a little bit more relevant. Like, thank you for including me in NPR or Business Insider, or thank you for that previous comment. I want to let you know that sunscreen, you know, I, I literally tailored the pitch and I said, like, this is the summer of sunburns. People will burn. And these are tips. And boom. Boom. You got to draw, like, you gotta draw it does. that line for them. Yeah. You got to draw it for them. And I think that's, kind of my zone of genius is drawing that line of relevance. So the more news you consume, the more you like, you know, see other people's pitches, right? And that's why I have so many in the starter pack is you're actually flexing this muscle. And so you're going to get so good at drawing those lines. So we have another a PR okay. starter pack member here having a question. What about press contacts? I already have friends of mine in the media or journalists for NPR business. Insider. How do I pitch my friends? Hmm. Yeah. I'm, 
I, you're, think of it as pitching as like, you know, an invention. I, you know, I've watched masterclasses by people like Sarah Blakely and, and all of these other major inventors and like their friends were those who helped them build their product. Don't, if there is a part of your brain that is telling you not to email them, turn it off and email them because they will let you know if, if, Hey, like, you know, this isn't my, my department or things like that. Um, you know, think of relatives, think of friends, like they'll be very, very transparent. Um, you know, I, I can think of one specific media contact that I reached out to that was a friend of a family friend. And I won't disclose like where they were, but they simply wrote back and were like, Hey, you know what, Ross, like, I'm not that person that can help you, but here are three people that can boom, like when they will be helpful, they, they can, there is no harm if you have a product or something like that. Um, it, 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 it works quickly. So, so do it. The attitude of persistence. And also I don't have those contacts. So you're already a leg up ahead of a lot of people. So you use that to your advantage, you know, lean into your why you're not bothering them. If you have a relevant pitch and that is why it's so important to be relevant and to write a really good pitch is because it's not going to be salesy. It's going to yeah. be like, I'm helping people and you're just, I'm just a vessel of information, passing this onto you, another vessel of information. So you can pass it on to more people. It's really that's that. Right. Yeah. Dr. Greta who recently, yeah, just that's a great question. Me. Um, so do you feel like your features need to be big time publications? You know, I struggled with that, right? So I was watching, um, you know, Gloria starter pack and I've worked for ABC news and all this. And I was just like, I need to be on the today show. Like I need to be here talking about the best things and this is my product will. and I will, but no, it's things like, Hey, you know, actually sunshots is now featured in one of the, you know, American skin cancer foundation brochures of how to protect yourself from skin wow. like that. That maybe isn't a big, big time population. If anyone is in their doctor's office and you know, it's very specific niche, but that's enough for me to feel like, yeah, like it's getting the word out there. You can never get the word out there too much. I wrote things like, you know, I moved to Dallas. I wrote to Dallas moms editors. That was in your Gloria. That was in your, um, your PR starter pack in the Excel spreadsheet. It was just like a, Dallas moms group, like how small could that be? But that's important to me. And those are really, really important. So um, I would say that there's nothing too small. Sometimes smaller, the better you have a bigger audience. And like Gloria always says, it builds like it really builds because you could say like, hey, I was featured in um, Everyday Health or I was featured in the American Skin Cancer Foundation. They find that interesting. So the next editor in the line of sharks is going to say, I like that. Let's feature them. Exactly. It's all, and, and you know, this sitting in the producer's room, if someone has been on a show, then you're more likely to feature them because it means Absolutely. That they're they know exactly. So it, it's hard to get that first one, but think of that as the hardest work we'll do. And it will always get easier, right? It's like, it's like training, training on training for a, a, mag, uh, a marathon. So someone says they might have missed this, but I want to know how much time you spend daily on pitches. Um, so once you get a good pitch, I mean, you, one thing that I will say is if you do sign up for the Google news alerts, you'll see if you need to tailor your pitch just a little bit. Um, so I would, I, you know, I took 10 minutes a day to really email however many people I could on the Excel spreadsheet, finding something that's relevant. I had a good pitch. I felt like I had a strong pitch because it is a numbers game. And then after, so 10 minutes a day for let's say three, four weeks, then maybe I spent an hour trying to rehone it as the summer started to change a little bit. And I felt like my Google news alerts were changing. So it, you shouldn't be spending that much time because remember if you're spending an hour writing an email that a producer might read for 20 seconds, and I mean that they're gonna spend 20 at most, like you're spending too much time. So just keep that in mind. Um, exactly. And then another user wrote, um, did you pitch the whole article or did you send a short pitch first with a highlight of your article? Um, I kind of sent the whole pitch, right? Like one of the things that we reviewed mm -hmm. with Glory is, they now have info that if they wanna write a whole article on just how to pack smart for the sun, like they know where to find me. So by giving them three things, it's really important because they might not think, you might think that number one is super important. They might think that number two is certain important. And so that's why giving them at least three is really, really yes, important. Yes, that is why all the PR starter pack pitches, that's how I write them. And honestly, you have all the media contacts. So I have a training in there is how to spend 10 minutes a day to send out pitches. And that's exactly what you did, 10 minutes a day. That's all you need. All right, so somebody says, what is the best email tracker to use? I use one you recommended, right? Which one do you use, Gloria? I use MailTrack.io. I'm not an affiliate for them. I probably should be because at this point I've recommended this yeah. so much. But there's people who use like Yam, Streak. I mean, there's so many Chrome extensions. So it's it, it, it. all you need is whether or not it's been open or not. There's more robust ones about like which link they clicked. But I think if you pay for the premium, it gets rid of the, the footer that says 
email is tracked, right? Because you, you probably correct. Don't yeah, I did have to pay a little extra for that. Yes, because yeah, you don't want that on there. But you know, it's funny, if you sign up for them, you could see how many people in regular life are mail tracking you because you actually can tell. It's like a global thing. Everyone is just tracking everyone's emails. Everyone wants to know if every email has been open. So don't worry about using it. That's what yeah. I also found. I mean, everyone in the age of data privacy, we have none. So what makes That's us think right. our emails are not being tracked? So Dr. Greta has another question. My signature course that I'm looking to promote, yay, congrats on making your course, is not yet live. Should I have a waitlist CTA ready as I begin pitching? Um, what do you think, Gloria? I think absolutely. I think I think 100%. I think to yeah. be a successful entrepreneur, you always have to have vision about three, being three steps ahead. So if you can do that now and have a waitlist CTA, you might not even have anything for them, but at least you have interested people, right? So that's I definitely would say yes to that. So we have another starter pack member here. Um, I know a producer at ABC that produces segments on race. I met them on Clubhouse and connected on Twitter. How do I start a pitch on Twitter? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, if you want to do it specifically on Twitter, there is a way to message on Twitter um, and people read it. Um, but you never know what those connections really could do for you. And so if they know you, you could remind them um, because you know everyone's meeting everyone there. So I don't know how closely you are to them, but absolutely shoot, shoot, shoot them a shoot them a relevant pitch on Twitter. Remember, they they're just not looking to catalog you in their back of their mind. They have to know why they want to catalog you. So if you're if you have something really relevant for them or you're noticing a trend, it all goes back to CPR. I mean it. That's why Gloria's all of what Gloria is telling you. I, I'm just here to vet, I guess, and validate everything that Gloria has told you because I've worked behind the scenes and it all is correct. So if you could give them relevancy, if you can give them credibility, they'll keep you. They'll 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 want you. They'll, they'll use you for sure. Awesome. Okay. So uh we're kind of out of time, but what I want to do is everyone please Please type in yes in the comments if you so enjoyed this. I know I did. Time has flown by. Yeah. It's a really busy day for me, but I could be talking to you for hours. I have a feeling I'm going to invite you on my podcast, which I'm going to be announcing All right. soon. Um, Amazing. But everyone said they love this live. Thank you, Dr. Ross. That's do one so thing sweet. for me, please. Everybody, please follow Dr. Ross at, at sunshots underscore. And if you want to get a hold of this beautiful invention that he pitched before it actually was live, he overcame his limiting beliefs. He pitched it before it was actually ready. Now it's finally ready. If you want to get your hands on it, you heard from Everyday Health and the National Journal of Dermatology. That's it's right. vetted. Go to sunshots.com. Boom. There you go. And by the way, Dr. Ross did not tell me to say this. <laughs> I, I genuinely believe <laughs> I didn't. that you did not. I and if you're interested that, in seeing all the successes that he got, that Dr. Greta Anderson got, um, go to prstarterpack.com. And this is how we form a community, right? So follow to follow uh, Dr. Ross at Sunshots. Check out the PR Starter Pack. He's in the Facebook group. I'm going to tag you in the Facebook group. If anyone has any questions, yep. hopefully that you, they can ask you directly. And let's let's keep this let's keep this going. Thank Absolutely. you all. So, so much. I appreciate love, your time. Love everyone. It is a community, Gloria. It really, really is a community. So thanks so much for having me today. Thank you for your time. I know you one busy father, husband, doctor, and inventor. So thank you so much for your time. Amazing. Stay well. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.